All right, so let's work on those other two examples that we didn't get to on Friday. Um, this video is to replace our class on Monday, April 29th, uh, because I was out sick. You might hear it in my voice. So the next couple of examples we did not get to on Friday were Newton's law of cooling uh, involving temperatures and also about motion with like wind resistance. So let me work th through these and, and talk about how these things work um, in this video. So Newton's law of cooling says that if a temperature uh, of an object is capital T and the temperature of the medium, like the room that it's in or whatever medium it might be in, like air or water or space, whatever the ambient temperature is, that's Tm, then the rate of change of the temperature of the object is proportional to the difference in the temperatures of T, the current temperature of the object, and Tm, the temperature of the surrounding uh, area that the object is in, also known as the medium that the object is in, which means that T prime is equal to some proportional constant times T minus Tm, and we write that as T prime equals negative K times the quantity T minus Tm. So let's use that to work with this example. Suppose a cup of coffee is brewed at 150 degrees Fahrenheit and is cooling in a room of constant temperature 70 degrees Fahrenheit. After 10 minutes, the temperature of the coffee is 100 degrees Fahrenheit. How hot is the coffee after 20 minutes? <clears throat> so let's take a record of uh, what we know. So the initial temperature of the coffee, capital T, at T equals zero is 150 degrees Fahrenheit. We also know that Tm of zero is 70, and it continues to be 70. Tm of T is 70. The room temperature isn't changing. All right. Um, we also know from the blue sentence that T of 10 is 100. And then we are looking for how hot the coffee is after 20 minutes. So let's see if we can set up a differential equation and then start looking for what information we might need to find given the information that we have. So our differential equation is t prime is equal to negative k times t, the function we're looking for, minus tm, which is 70. So let's see, I think that might be separable. We can write this as 1 over capital T minus 70 times t prime is equal to negative k. So we can split that up into the integral of 1 over t minus 70 d capital T is equal to the integral of minus k d little t for time. This gives us uh, the natural log of the absolute value of t minus 70 is equal to negative kt plus c. So t minus 70 is equal to a e to the um, minus kt. So t is equal to 70 plus a e to the minus kt. Great. So now we can use our different um, information we have about t, t of 0 being 150, and t of 10 being 100. We can use these two pieces of information to help us find capital A and K. So let's go look for uh, both of those. I think we can get capital A if we use the T of 0. So let's look at t of 0, which is 150 would equal t of 0, which is equal to 70 plus a times e to the 0. So this tells us that 150 minus 70 equals a, or a equals 80. So we've got a revised t, t of t, capital T, the temperature, is now um, 70 plus 80 e to the minus kt. And now we can use that 100 is equal to what we get when we plug in 10. So 70 plus 80 e to the minus k times 10. And we can sort that out 
we can do our algebra there and get that k is equal to uh, 1 over 10 natural log of 3 eighths. Let's see. I think that feels right. So that's right. Um, wait a second. Ah, I dropped a minus sign. Okay, so we should have that capital T of T is equal to 70 plus uh, 80 E to the 1 tenth, because two negatives make it positive, natural log of 3 eighths times t. Now we might be thinking to ourselves, hey wait, that seems like it's a positive rate because we have a positive constant, but we need to remember that the natural log of a number less than one is negative, so this overall will be a negative uh, coefficient in front of the t, and so that's a negative exponent, so we will have exponential decay for this piece. So the temperature will decrease towards the room temperature as the time goes to infinity because this number is actually negative because the natural log of 3 eighths is less than zero. All right, so we now need to figure out what is the temperature at 20 minutes. So T of 20 is equal to 70 plus 80 e to the 1 tenth natural log of 3 eighths times 20, which after a little bit of work using a calculator is approximately 81.25 degrees Fahrenheit. In fact, it's not approximately, it's exactly equal to 81.25 degrees Fahrenheit. All right, so that's giving us the working through this example using Newton's law of cooling, where the temperature change T prime is proportional to the difference in the object temperature minus the medium or the room temperature. Let's talk about motion with resistance. So I won't talk a ton about the conceptual buildup here, but basically if we have an object traveling through a medium, typically air or sometimes water, we can assume that the forces acting on it are gravity, pulling it downwards, and there might be some resistance due to the speed of the object against the air. So if we make the assumption that the resistance to, due to the medium is directly proportional to the speed of the object, then we can build the following equation by adding of forces. We have the force due to gravity, which is mass times the gravity constant for the acceleration due to gravity, and we have the resistance force, some proportional constant times the current velocity so if we set that up as our force is some mass times acceleration, we have minus mg minus kv. And if we rewrite a as the derivative of velocity, then we can create a differential equation. So I think the key thing happens right here where the clever step is we write a, the acceleration, and we remember that the acceleration is the derivative of the velocity, so we can actually create a velocity differential equation. So that allows us to say that V prime is equal to negative G minus K over MV. All right, so let's look at this in an example. If we have a four kilogram object launched vertically into the air at a speed of 40 meters per second near the surface of the earth, we need it to be close enough to the Earth that it will fall back towards the Earth, but we need it to be far enough away from the Earth that it can reach terminal velocity during its descent. So the object needs to be high enough above the, the surface of the Earth to fall far enough to get sped up all the way to its uh, terminal velocity, which is the point at which the velocity re reaches its maximum uh, because the wind resistance pushing back on it prevents it from speeding up any further. So 
we have a four kilogram object that was launched vertically in the air at 40 meters per second. Suppose the air resists the motion with a force of 0.49 newtons for each meters per second of speed. Using that g is 9.8 meters per second squared, find a model for the object's vertical velocity and find the terminal velocity. All right, so some of the things that we know are the mass. The mass is four kilograms. <coughs> Excuse me. We know that uh, V of zero, the initial velocity, was 40 meters per second. And that's positive because it was going upward. It was launched vertically into the air, so it's a positive initial velocity. We know that the gravity constant is 9.8 meters per second squared. And we were told that K, the uh, resistance coefficient or proportional constant, is 0.049 uh, sort of newtons per meters per second something like that. The units will work itself out. Alright, so this allows us to create the equation V prime is equal to negative 9.8 minus 0 0.49 over 4 V. And that's plugging in the different values we had for G, K, and M into our V prime equals minus G minus K over M times the velocity. So now we can work with this by separating variables and integrating. So we can rewrite this as 1, oops, let me get my pen, 1 divided by negative 9.8 minus 0 0.49 over 4 v times v prime equals 1. And then we can rewrite that as the integral of 1 divided by negative 9.8 minus 0 0.49 over 4 V dV equals the integral of 1 dt, because that was a separable equation. So now we can integrate with u substitution on the left, and we would get, um, let's see, minus 4 divided by 0 0.49 times the natural log of negative 9.8 minus 0 0.49 over 4 uh, V, that's going to equal T plus C. Now we keep solving for V, and let's see, we get the natural log of negative 9.8 minus 0 0.49 over 4 V is equal to uh, invert and multiply, so negative 0 0.49 over 4t plus c, and all that other constant multiplied by that will just get absorbed into the plus c. So then we'll get negative 9.8 minus 0 0.49 over 4v equals a e to the minus 0 0.49 over 4t. So there we exponentiated both sides to get rid of the log. And so now we can add the 9.8 and we can multiply by the reciprocal to get just V. And so V of T is equal to negative 4 divided by 0 0.49 times 9.8 plus A E to the negative 0 0.49 over 4 T. So now we can use the idea that we want to find the limit as t goes to infinity of v of t to find that terminal velocity, which is the limit as t goes to infinity of what we just found. And so we get uh, the limit as t goes to infinity of e to the minus number times t, that goes to zero. So we get um, negative four divided by 0 0.49 times 9.8 plus a times zero. So our terminal velocity is negative four divided by 0 0.49 times 9.8. That's our terminal velocity. 
determined I can't spell as per usual but we'll correct it so there we go our terminal velocity is that so that would be in meters per second I hope walking through these couple of examples are helpful for you um, when you need them and I hope you have a great rest of your day goodbye